welcome to NPTEL MOOCs course on machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and applications. In my last class I discussed the concept of KL transformation and the PCA the principal component analysis. In the KL transformation from the input vector x I can determine the mean vector and the covariance matrix. From the covariance matrix I can determine eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. And with the help of these eigenvectors I can determine the transformation matrix A of the KL transformation. So, what is KL transformation? Y is equal to A x minus mu x that is the KL transformation. My original data they are highly correlated, but after the transformation the transform data will be uncorrelated. So, that is the objective of the KL transformation. So, I am projecting data along the direction of the eigenvectors and because of this projection the transform data will be uncorrelated. And after this I discuss the concept of the truncated transformation matrix. We are not considering all the eigenvectors uh, in case of the uh, truncated transformation matrix and with the help of these eigenvectors k number of eigenvectors I can determine the truncated transformation matrix a k. a k is the truncated transformation matrix and after this I can determine the transformation the transformation is y is equal to a k x minus mu x. So, that means I am considering the largest eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors and these are the principal components and that is the concept of the principal component analysis. So, one problem of the KL transformation is that that in KL transformation the transformation kernel is not fixed it depends on the statistics of the input data that is the main problem of the KL transformation. Unlike uh, other transformation like DFT, uh, DCT the transformation kernel is fixed, but in case of the KL transformation the transformation kernel that is the transformation matrix depends on the statistics of the input data that is the problem of the KL transformation. And also in case of the PCA you have seen that I am projecting data along the direction of the eigenvectors and there is no class information. So, if I consider uh, suppose classes different types of classes. So, uh, in case of the PCA class information we are not considering only we are determining the best projection direction and that means we are reducing the dimension of the input vector. So, the class information is not available and that is why the PCA is an unsupervised technique. So, the problem of the PCA is that class information we are not considering we are only projecting data along the direction of the eigenvectors. To consider that issue we are considering another technique that is called the LDA linear discriminant analysis. In this case we are determining the best projection direction considering the class information. So, the objective of the LDA is to find a set of vectors which maximize between class scatter and minimizes within class scatter that is the goal of the LDA the linear discriminant analysis. So, let us discuss about LDA and already I told you that what is the difference between the PCA and the LDA in case of the PCA class information is not available, but in case of the LDA uh, we have class information that is why LDA is a supervised technique. So, let us now discuss about the concept of the LDA the linear discriminant analysis. So, in the LDA already I told you the goal is to find a set of vectors that maximizes the between class scatter while minimizing the within class scatter. So, now let us discuss about the LDA the linear discriminant analysis LDA. So, what is the uh, goal? So, LDA uses class information. In case of the PCA we are not considering the class information and the goal is to find to find a set of vectors that maximizes that maximize 
the between class scatter while minimizing the within class scatter so that is the goal of the lda and we are considering class information in lda so in this case lda considers two criteria so what are the criteria one is maximize the distance between distance between means of the classes means of classes so that means one objective is we have to maximize the between class scatter so that is one objective the number one maximize the distance between means of the classes and another one is minimize minimize the variations within each class that means i have to minimize the within class scatter so that is why we are considering one quantity the quantity is this the difference between these two means so mu 1 square suppose mu 2 square so for two classes we are considering this and s1 square plus s2 square that concept i will be explaining later on but this is the quantity i have to maximize so this quantity i have to maximize so i will explain you later on uh, how to get this quantity but to fulfill these two conditions i have to maximize this quantity and that is the objective of the lda so let us uh, explain the concept of the LDA and already I told you the difference between the PCA and the LDA. So in this figure you can see uh, in the first figure we are projecting data along the direction of Eisen vectors and that is nothing but the PCA the principal component analysis. So this is the PCA that means we are projecting data along the direction of the Eisen vectors. So what is uh, missing in this case the missing is the class information is missing. So the class information is missing here. So let us see what is the good projection, what is the good projection. So in this figure you can see I am considering two classes suppose this is omega 1 and another one is omega 2. So you can see the samples belonging to the class omega 1 and the samples belonging to the class omega 2. So if I consider the projection direction suppose 1 one is the projection direction another one is 2 so if i consider the projection direction 1 then you can see the two classes overlap that means if i consider the projection direction 1 you can see the two classes two classes overlap and if i consider projection direction 2 the second direction the two classes are well separated two classes are separated so we can consider the projection direction 1 and projection direction 2 but corresponding to the projection direction 1 you can see the two classes overlap here the overlapping take place here this is the overlapping but corresponding to uh, the projection direction 2 the two classes are separated well separated so that means the projection direction 2 is better as compared to the projection direction 1. So we have to find the best projection direction we have to find. So move to the next slide. So what information we have to consider? So one is the between class scatter. 
or the between class distance we have to consider. So, what is the between class distance? The between class distance is nothing but distance between distance between the centroids of different classes. So, in this figure you can see uh, we are considering two classes. So, these are the samples corresponding to the class omega 1 and these are the samples corresponding to the class omega 2 and you can see the centroid of the class omega 1 and centroid of the class omega 2 and you can see that this is the distance between these two centroids and actually this is the measure of between class distance. So, that is nothing but the between class distance and if you move to the second figure in the second figure we have considered within class distance. So, that means what is the within class distance? Accumulated distance accumulated distance of an instance to the centroid of its class. So, here you can see what we are considering corresponding to this class omega 1 I have the samples and corresponding to the second class I have the samples. So, I am finding the distance if you see this is the centroid. So, I have two centroids centroid 1 corresponding to the first class and centroid 2 is the centroid of the second class the samples of the second class. So, what we are finding we are finding the distance between the samples and the centroid that is nothing but the accumulated distance of an instance to the centroid of its class that is nothing but the accumulated distance of an instance to the centroid of a particular class and that is the meaning of the within class distance and what is the objective of the LDA? The objective of the LDA is to maximize between class distance and minimize within class distance. So, this is the concept of the between class distance and within class distance. So, that linear discriminate analysis uh, finds most discriminate projection by maximizing between class distance and minimizing within class distance. So, if I consider in the figure I am showing the samples belonging to two classes. So, I am showing the samples belonging to two classes omega 1 and omega 2 and you can see the centroid 1 corresponding to the samples of the class 1 omega 1 and centroid 2 uh, that is the centroid of the samples of the class omega 2. So, what is the objective of the LDA? We have to find the most discriminate projection by maximizing between class distance and minimizing within class distance. So, in this the second figure you can see I am showing two projection directions. So, already I have explained that one. So, if I consider the projection direction 1 and another one is the projection direction 2. So, you can see in case of the projection direction 1, you can see the samples are overlapping. The samples belonging to two classes, they are overlapping. But in case of the projection number 2, uh, they are well separated. So, that means I have to consider the projection direction 2. We have to consider the projection direction 2. Projection direction 2 we have to consider. So, 1 is not good because in case of the 1 you can see the overlapping of the samples belonging to, belonging to two different classes. So, in case of the 1 you can see uh, the overlapping take place between the samples of two classes. So, now let us discuss uh, the mathematical concept behind LDA. So, what is the mathematics? So, let us consider what is LDA the linear discriminate analysis. So, suppose we have C number of classes C classes we are considering and suppose each class and each class has n i number of samples n i samples and this is m dimensional samples m dimensional 
samples. So where i is equal to 1, 2, so we have c number of classes and you can see each class has n i number of samples and these samples are m dimensional. So how can I, how can I write the m dimensional samples? m dimensional samples samples I can write suppose x1 x2 so these are the samples the m dimensional samples and I have altogether n i number of samples. So if I stack these samples from different classes into one big fat matrix x such that each column represents one sample. So I am repeating this. So stacking these samples from different classes into one big fat matrix x such that each column represents one sample. So I will be getting one matrix, the matrix is x. So what is the objective of the uh, this LDA? So we want to obtain a transformation that means to obtain a transformation of x, we are doing the transformation of x to y through projecting the samples in x, x is the matrix because how to get the matrix uh, already I have explained that means I have to stack the samples from different classes into one matrix the matrix is x such that each column represents one sample. So like this I am getting this matrix x. So to obtain a transformation of x to y through projecting the samples in x onto, onto a hyperplane. with dimension c minus 1, c is the number of classes. So let us see what does this mean. So move to the next slide. So suppose we assume m dimensional samples, so m dimensional samples The samples are x1, x2, suppose I have x n number of samples. So out of this n1 number of samples that belongs to n1 number of samples that belongs to the class omega 1 and n2 number of samples that belongs to the class omega 2. So m dimensional samples we are considering x1, x2 up to xn. And out of this, suppose n1 number of samples belong to omega 1 and n2 number of samples belong to omega 2. So we want to obtain a scalar y by projecting the samples x onto a line. So that means uh, what we want to obtain? To obtain, to obtain a scalar, scalar is y by projecting the samples x onto a line. So that means I am doing the projections and suppose if I consider uh, c is equal to 2 that means c minus 1 space corresponding to c is equal to 2. So that means if I consider two number of classes, so the space is c minus 1. So that means because of this projection, dimension is also reduced. So what is this uh, projection? This is nothing but y is equal to, just I am taking the dot product, w is the weight vector 
and x is the input vector. So, where x is the input vector and you can see these are the components of the vector x1, x2 up to xm. So, this is my input vector and what is the weight vector? The weight vector is w is the weight vector and these are the coefficients w1, w2 up to wm. So, w is the weight vector. So, I have this uh, transformation that means I am doing the projection like this that is nothing but the dot product. So, w is the projection vector I can say uh, this is the w is the projection vector this is the projection vector or I can say the weight vector or the projection vector projection vector is w and that is used to project x to y. Okay. So, in this figure you can see I am showing two projection directions in the first figure if you see in the first figure the figure number 1 I am showing uh, the two dimensional feature space and you can see these are the samples suppose the samples belonging to the class omega 1 and the red samples that is the samples belonging to the class omega 2. If I consider this projection direction, direction is suppose 1, you can see the samples are overlapping. And if I consider the second figure, I am, I am considering the projection direction 2, corresponding to this projection direction 2, the samples of two classes are well separated. That means, which one is the best projection direction? The best projection direction is the direction 2 one is not a good projection direction because overlapping take place. Uh, so, we have to consider the projection direction 2. Now, how to get the optimum projection direction? Which one is the best projection direction? There may be many, many projection direction, but out of which, which one is the best or which one is the optimum uh, projection direction? That means, uh, we have to find the objective is to, to find the optimum optimum direction given by given by actually the projection vector w so that is uh, this optimum i can write this optimum value this optimum w i can write w star so, I have to find the optimum direction of W, W star we have to determine. So, uh, that is the objective of the LDA. So, we have to find uh, the best projection vector and for this uh, we have to see the separation between the two classes that we have to observe the separation between the classes. So, already I told you we have to maximize between class scatter and we have to minimize within class scatter. So, how to define this scatter? So, move to the next slide. So, to uh, get the best projection direction, how to get the best projection direction to get the optimum optimum w that is the projection direction. So, the mean vector, so what I have to do? the mean vector of each class x and y feature space is uh, we can obtain like this. So, suppose mean is defined like this mu i that is the mean vector 1 by n i summation x. So, x belongs to suppose plus omega i. So, the mean vector of the all the input vectors belonging to the class omega i we can determine and after the projection of this I can also determine the mu, mean and after the projection I can also determine the mean. So, after the projection the this mean vector uh, is nothing but mu i tilde that is 1 by n i summation y. So, y belongs to the class omega i 
and which can be represented like this 1 by ni summation over x in terms of x I am writing so x belongs to the class omega i omega transpose x so that is equal to omega transpose 1 by ni summation x belongs to omega i x so w transpose mu i so i am getting this one so this mu i that is before the projection before projection and this mu i tilde that is the after the projection so that means what is the interpretation of this projecting x to y uh, will lead to projecting the mean of x to the mean of y so i am repeating this uh, what is the interpretation of this projecting x to y will lead to projecting the mean of x to the mean of y that is the interpretation of this so we can determine uh, the distance between the projected means and that i can consider as my objective function so what is the objective function i can consider suppose objective function function objective function is nothing but i can consider suppose j w i can consider and that is nothing but the distance between the projected means so distance between the projected means mu i tilde minus mu 2 tilde and you remember we are considering only two classes in this example so that is w transpose mu 1 minus w transpose mu 2 and that is equal to w transpose mu 1 minus mu 2 so this objective function j w we can consider and you can see we are considering uh, the measure the measure is the distance between the projected means so that should be maximized so after the projection of the samples belonging to two classes we are getting the means uh, corresponding to the first class and corresponding to the second class we are getting two means and these two means should be well separated and that is why we are considering this objective function j w that we are considering so now the problem is uh, we are considering this uh, that distance between the projected means we are considering as an objective function but it is not a very good measure because it does not uh, take into consideration of the standard deviation within the class so that we have to consider the standard deviation within the class we have to consider i am repeating this this projected means we are considering as an objective function but that is not a good measure because we are not considering the standard deviation within the class so that can be illustrated in the next slide so here i am showing uh, these two projection directions so in the first projection direction if you see in this direction direction suppose one the two means are uh, well separated you can see the separation between these two means are very good but still the samples are overlapping but if I consider the second projection direction that is number 2 here so in case of the projection direction 2 the distance between these two mean is not significant it is not big but still the separability is very good so that means you can see I can say this axis this axis has larger distance between means but separability is not good because the samples will be overlapping so that means the direction one is not good and the second direction uh, this axis this axis gives better class separability
So, that means what is the interpretation of this? That means we consider the criteria function as JW and that is the difference between the two projected means and that is not a very good measure because we are not considering the standard deviation within the class. So, this is the example in this case. So, to consider this issue what we have to consider uh, the method proposed by Fisher and that we have to consider. So, to consider this issue uh, you can see in my next slide to consider this issue So, what I can consider maximize a function that represents the difference between between the means normalized by by a measure of measure of the within class within class variability. So, that is actually it is called a scatter. And that is called a scatter. So, for each class we can define the scatter and that is equivalent of the variance. So, what is the scatter? So, scatter S i a tilde square y minus mu i tilde whole square. So, for each and every class I have to consider this scatter and that is actually equivalent of the variance and that is nothing but the sum of square difference between the projected samples and their class means. So, we can determine the scatter like this. So, what is S i square? So, that is nothing but the variability that is the measure what is S i square that is the variability that is the variability within class omega i after projecting it onto the y space after projecting it on the y space that is the scatter. So, we can consider s 1 tilde square plus s 2 tilde square. So, that is the measure of the variability within the two classes after the projection. So, that is I can say this is nothing but the variability within two classes after projection. And this is nothing but within class scatter. Within class scatter of the projected samples, I can write of the projected samples. So, you can see uh, that S 1 tilde square plus S 2 tilde square and that is nothing but the within class scatter of the projected samples that we can determine. So, move to the next slide. So, the linear discriminant is defined as a linear function 
W transpose x that maximize the criterion function. What is the criterion function? The distance between the projected means normalized by the within class scatter of the projected samples. So, that means we are considering this uh, the criterion function. What is the criterion function? The criterion function is j w that is nothing but the difference between the projected means square and s 1 tilde square plus s 2 tilde square divided by uh, s 1 tilde square divided by s 2 tilde square. So, that means what is the criterion function? We are considering the distance between the projected means normalized by the within class scatter of the projected samples. So, what actually we are now looking for? We are looking for a projection where samples from the same class are projected very close to each other and at the same time the projected means are as far as possible. So, that means what we are looking for? We are looking for a projection direction where samples of the same class are projected very close to each other and at the same time the projected means should be far away from each other. So, that is the objective. So, in this figure what we are considering I am showing the projection direction 1 suppose this is the projection direction 1. In this projection direction what actually we are looking for that means the first condition is the projected means should be far away from each other. So, that is one condition and also the samples from the same class are projected very close to each other. So, you, you can see uh, this is the projection of the samples belonging to one class and this is the projection of the samples belonging to another class and you can see the separation between these two means the projected means mu 1 and mu 2. So, I am repeating this I am looking for a projection direction where the samples from the same class are projected very close to each other and at the same time the projected means should be far away from each other. So, these, these are the conditions and based on these conditions we are uh, determining this uh, criterion function that is j w. So, we have to find uh, the optimum projection direction. So, we have to find the optimum projection the optimum projection is w star that we have to uh, determine. So, how to find this one? So, we have to find the optimum projection direction and how to find this optimum projection direction you can see. So, we will define a measure of the scatter in multivariate feature space x. So, we have to find the optimum projection direction that is w star. So, for this what we can consider? We will define a measure of the scatter in multivariate feature space x and which are denoted as scatter matrix. So, what is the scatter matrix? The scatter matrix I can consider S i x belongs to the class omega i x minus mu i and x minus mu i transpose. So, that means what we are considering. Uh, so, we will define a measure of the scatter in multivariate feature space x and which can be denoted by a scatter matrix. So, what is S w now? S w is nothing but for two classes S 1 plus S 2 we have to determine. So, this S i, this S i is nothing but is a covariance matrix, covariance matrix of class omega i and we have obtained S w. So, what is S w? S w is nothing but S 1 plus S 2 and that is actually S w is called the within class scatter matrix within class scatter So, we have defined the within class scatter matrix. So, the scatter of the projection y can be expressed as a function of the scatter matrix in feature space x. 
So, how to do this? Move to the next slide. So, we are representing SI tilde square in the projected space y minus mu i tilde whole square y belongs to the class omega i and that is equal to summation x belongs to omega i w transpose x minus w transpose x minus w transpose mu i square I can write like this. So, in this expression this y is nothing but this already we have defined that is the the projection of, projection of x onto y and this one is this the mu i tilde that is nothing but the projection of the mean. So, that means this s i tilde square is equal to summation x belongs to omega i So, I can write like this. So, W transpose So, this is equal to W transpose S i W. So, what is the this value S 1 tilde square that is the after the projection we are considering S 2 tilde square that is nothing but W transpose S 1 W plus W transpose S 2 W that is equal to W transpose S1 plus S2 W and this can be written like this. This is W transpose SW W and this is nothing but SW within class scatter. So, here in this case if you see here this S 1 tilde square that is nothing but this W transpose S 1 W and what is S 2 tilde square that is nothing but this. So, in this case we are getting S W. So, what is actually this S W? S W tilde we are getting and that is nothing but what is S W tilde that is nothing but within class class scatter matrix matrix of the projected samples y. So, we are getting the within class scatter matrix of the projected samples y. Similarly, the difference between the projected means in y space can be expressed in terms of the means in the original Fisher space x space that is the x space. So, let us move to the next slide. So, we can determine mu 1 tilde minus mu 2 tilde square is equal to W transpose mu 1 minus W transpose mu 2 whole square which is equal to 
W transpose mu1 minus mu2 mu1 minus mu2 transpose W. So, in this case you can see here this mu1 tilde that is nothing but this one and what is mu2 tilde? What is mu2 tilde? That is nothing but W transpose mu2. So, corresponding to this we will be getting and W transpose S B W and that is called S B tilde and this S B tilde that is called between class scatter. So, in this expression you can see we are determining mu 1 tilde and that is nothing but W transpose mu 1. So, mu 1 is the original uh, mean of the samples and mu 1 tilde that is the projected means and similarly mu 2 is nothing but the mean of the original samples and mu 2 tilde that is nothing but the mean of the projected samples. So, from this you can determine the between class scatter that is the SB you can determine. So, in this case you can see the SB tilde is the between class scatter of the projected samples samples y and what was SB? SB is nothing but SB tilde is nothing but the between class scatter of the projected samples y and what is SB? SB is the between class scatter between class scatter between class scatter of the original samples. Original samples. Original samples means x. So, we can determine uh, the within class scatter matrix and also the between class scatter matrix. And based on this, we can determine the criterion function that is the criterion function is j w already we have defined. So, this mu 1 tilde minus mu 2 tilde whole square and we, we considered s 1 tilde square s 2 tilde square and which can be represented like this now w transpose s b w and w transpose s w w. So, what is this j w? It is a uh, what is j w? It is a measure of the difference between class means normalized by a measure of the within class scatter matrix that is j w. So, I am repeating this j w that is the criterion function is a measure of the difference between class means uh, um, normalized by a measure of the within class scatter matrix that is j w. Now, we have to find the maximum j w. So, for this we have to differentiate and equate to 0. So, our objective is to find the optimum value of w that is the projection vector. So, that means we have to maximize j w and we have to equate it to 0 because we have to find the maximum value. So, how to get this one? So, move to the next slide. So, to find maximum maximum of j w this criterion function so we have to differentiate and equate to 0 so that means d d w j w that is nothing but d d w w transpose s b w w transpose s w w 
that is equal to 0. So, how to differentiate this one? So, this will be equal to W transpose S W W D W W transpose S B W minus W transpose S B W D D W so you have to see this mathematics is equal to 0 so that is equal to w transpose as w w 2 sp w minus w transpose sb w 2 sw w is equal to 0 and dividing by dividing by 2 w transpose s w w so dividing by this 2 w transpose s w w so what we will get we will be getting w transpose s w w w transpose s w w s b w so this is not a difficult mathematics only you have to do the differentiation and do some mathematics so w transpose s w w s w w is equal to 0 so that means s b w minus z w s w w is equal to 0 so finally we are getting s w finally we are getting s w inverse s b w minus z w w is equal to 0. So, to solve this equation we are considering the generalized eigenvalue problem. So, move to the next slide for solving we are considering the generalized eigenvalue problem. So, S w to the power S w inverse S b w. So, lambda w where lambda is equal to a w and lambda is nothing but a scalar it is scalar lambda is a scalar. So, corresponding to this eigenvalue problem uh, we can determine the optimum value of w that is the projection vector arg max for w j w is nothing but arg max for w w transpose s b w w transpose s w w is equal to s w to the power minus 1 mu 1 minus mu 2. So, we are getting the optimum projection direction that is w star is equal to s w inverse and mu 1 minus mu 2. So, we are getting the best projection direction by using this equation. 
so this is the equation so with the help of this equation you can determine the best projection direction so considering this uh, case uh, because we are determining the best projection direction uh, with the help of this criterion function the criterion function is j w uh, you can see we have determined the projection direction the best projection direction w star so in this class i discussed the concept of lda linear discriminate analysis i considered only two classes and based on these two classes i have determined the best projection direction and the same concept can be extended for c number of classes that is called multiple discriminate analysis one concept is very important that is uh, the between class scatter and within class scatter and based on this we have determined the best projection direction so the goal of the lda is to find a set of vectors that maximizes between class scatter and simultaneously it minimizes within class scatter and that is the goal of the lda the linear discriminate analysis so let me stop here today thank you